Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Space Age Electronics Podcast. My name is Casey. I'm the West Central Business Development Manager. And today I have another special guest, Michael Ventola. He is the Business Development Manager for the Southeast region. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Hey Casey, good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> Um, Mike, I wanted to have you on the podcast for a few reasons. Uh, we don't get to see each other in person that much, but, uh, I f- my first question is how long have you been with space age? Well, I just passed, uh, eight years going into my ninth year. So I started in 2013 with space age. Wow. That's quite a bit longer than me, but you've been in the industry for a while, right? How, uh, where were you before space age? <laughs> yeah. Well, so let me see. So you take the eight. Uh, yeah, 35 plus years. 35. So, uh, started back in 86. Okay. I was born in 89. So a little bit longer than I've been in the industry. Yeah. yeah 1986, not 1886. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Um, where'd you, so where have you been in the industry? Do you, do you did, you're at space age now. Where were you before? So I, I worked with, uh, several of the big manufacturers uh Cerberus Siemens was uh when I was up in Jersey worked with them and then Edward Systems Technology probably for 20 22 plus years oh okay so yeah you know usually when I'm with a company I, I kind of hang my hat there and very loyal stay with the stay with the organization what'd you do for Edwards excuse me what'd you do for Edwards <sighs> I did. I did the gamut, man. I, I, I started. You know, my background's engineering, right? So mm-hmm. I have a electronic engineering degree. I got that up in Jersey, where I started my career. Um, but started with Edwards when they were fast before the five buyouts um, <laughs> in their technical support and their application engineering group. And that was down in Sarasota, Florida. And then, you know, kind of moved up through the ranks, senior technician, did a lot of field service work, helping customers, commission systems, resolve issues out in the field, uh, moved into sales in the late 90s. Okay. So I became a regional manager, actually uh, a district manager, then a regional manager. I ran the Southeast region. Um, and then, then I ended up in, in marketing, so product marketing and management, so help with product development and so forth. So, yeah, a good uh, four or five different <laughs> roles uh, with that organization over two decades. Yeah, that's a lot of knowledge and history with life safety. I think it's kind of, as I've been talking to other BDMs uh, with Space Age, it seems like a common theme where all of us have had some type of technical uh, field training as well as a history of actually like handling products <clears throat> and handling, you know, the actual install part of the job. So I think it really helps out a lot to have that background. Um, now with, with space age, uh, I know we do a lot of smoke control and we do a lot of graphic enunciation. Aren't you on a committee for one of those? Yeah. At FBA 92. So, uh, that and and 204 which uh, 92 is the smoke control 204 is smoke management mm-hmm. slightly different but uh yeah I'm a, I'm a principal uh for the manufacturer um okay and representing space age there yeah okay so long story short if i have questions about smoke control or smoke management i know that if you don't have the answer it's probably a dumb question <laughs> There's look at, no question, it's a dumb question. So, uh, you know, certainly ask us. Um, oh. It's complicated. It's, it's a real complicated topic. I, I was speaking with one of our BDMs the other, the other day. And, you know, we often forget how much we know because we just kind of head off into explaining things and not realizing that others may not have that experience or, or level of competency and it was really eye-opening to me because I had, I had to dial back mm-hmm. to, the, to more of the basics on trying to explain some of the aspects of smoke control but but look at, at the, the important lesson there was the fact that 
it's it's recognizable, right? So so right. When we're speaking with customers who have varying degrees of understanding within a complicated topic. Let's say it's smoke control in this case, it could be area of rescue, um, you know, void, emergency voice systems. We have the experience to kind of tailor our response and take them from where they're currently at and help them move forward. Right. Yeah. Whenever you're talking to someone about a a certain subject or you're talking to a subject matter expert, it's always blatantly aware if they don't know enough. And it's like you said, it's always easy to scale back to, to get it to more of a beginner's level or more of a novice level. Now, Mike, you, uh, with your long history in life safety, why, why space age? What made space age stand out from other, uh, companies, uh, and life safety manufacturers what made them stand out? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> look at after after almost three decades, two and a half decades in the industry, and then working for big manufacturers. So I actually started with a what we used to call mom and pops, right? Right. Family owned business up in Jersey in '86, and you know the, 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 the whole relationships there at the family-owned entrepreneurial business is way different than corporate America, right? Mm-hmm. You know, while I dealt with individuals in the C-suite and, you know, kind of focusing on very high-level goals, you know, you get back down to somebody like the Space Age where it's family-owned. They've been around for over five decades mm-hmm. in, this, in this industry through some tough times. Mm-hmm. But they have three, third generation is working in the business and it, it's like when, when they want to try to do something, they just do it, right? And mm-hmm. they fail fast, fail cheap, right? But they move on. And, it, and, and, it, and you don't have to go through all the red tape to try to get somebody to approve an idea or try an idea. Now, the benefits of that, it's, and it's also, it's not, it wasn't only attractive for me as a career professional, but it's also attractive to our customers. Mm-hmm. Because customers, when they need a solution, they need someone to kind of kick around the ideas and get to work, and 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 that's what we do. So that was really that was really exciting to me when 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 I interviewed with them. They just kind of laid out a litany of things, and I was like, oh, I remember you guys doing that. Oh, I remember that. You know, and then you see all the other stuff that they've done, and it's like, wow, you guys did. Good. We, we I think we've done more stuff that we've forgotten about. <laughs> than we actually have in our portfolio today, which are literally thousands of items. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the number of part numbers we have in custom items is, it's it's ridiculous because we have to, I have to talk to all the mediums often of say, we've done something like this before and we've done it 32 different ways because we can be so custom. Like it's a question of which one do I actually show the customer and I've enjoyed it because it's helped me stretch my legs uh, in the life safety industry, also helping create new products and helping be that really that specific custom per project solution. And I've liked that a lot with Space Age. And you mentioned something really uh, that kind of hit my mind about cutting through red tape. There's a lot of stuff that we do where we're kind of the manufacturer's manufacturer and prove a concept and then like you said if it doesn't work not not that much it hasn't really been that much time or money to find out that it didn't work so fail fast fail cheap move on right exactly um now there are changes coming to space age and with my territory that i cover about half of the half of the people i meet have never heard of space age uh because we're up in the mountains we're not on any coast um but there's a new change coming up with this direct dealer program that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, can you explain really quickly what this direct dealer program is going to do and what what it is? Yeah, so so Space Age always had direct dealers. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we had, we had pretty much an open policy of anybody. Call us up on the phone, we sell you stuff. Mm-hmm. So over the course of a decade and once again I've been with Space Age eight years so that that growth that we've experienced really kind of clued us in that we really don't have one size fits all business any longer 
right? So since we are so specialized, and 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 we 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 found that we tried to stay true to our uh, business roots, right? So so we want to stay in our lane, our expertise, right? But we know our customers have varying degrees of needs. <laughs> so now is the time for us to kind of realign all of our direct dealers and have them choose what's the best products and services from space age since we've expanded so much and we've improved our our operations both from our fabrication side to our internal um uh enterprise suite of software that manages our business Mm -hmm. so now we can leverage all of those investments and tailor them to the customer's choice right so so these four tiers of service bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, the customer can now choose which product sets they want to go direct with Space Age with, mm-hmm. uh, what other services that we order offer that they may not have known about that actually fit into their organization that they can now adopt and pour it into their organization. Or they could use a variety of other methods to acquire Space Age products, such as over the over-the-counter businesses, ADI, Brooks Equipment, mm-hmm. DC Life Safety. So you can see we've really expanded um, the ways by which our dealers, our direct customers, partners can interact with Space Age and help with their project solutions. It seems like it's it's like a a re-educating process of saying hey just to remind you you can get these products and services from us but also it's a more focused program on what's right for your business what's right for where you want your business to be is that is, am i am i thinking about it right that's that's exactly right and, and and then also right sometimes customers so 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 this this is this is a uh, important the fact that we sit on every primary NFPA 72, NFPA uh, code body, mm-hmm. so 72, 241, 92, 70, we sit on the NEC, mm-hmm. we see stuff coming down the pike way before it gets down to a jurisdiction. Right. So having a relationship with a company that's actually preparing for the future helps our partners not unknowingly be prepared for the future right right so <clears throat> so by then maybe not today right maybe maybe it's two or three years from today they're going to say you know what we want to get into um area of rescue system mm-hmm. two-way emergency communication systems right so we're in that business we've been in that business for a couple of years now mm-hmm. we were leading in the ul listing of those systems mm-hmm. um you know, so there we are waiting for to help a customer, a partner of ours that says, we need your help. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good point you're making. Uh, sometimes uh, people in the life safety industry forget or they don't fully understand the the tools that they have at their fingertips. And one of those with Space Age is the actual BDM. And it seems like this tier program is is not only re-emphasizing that and reminding people of that, but also like choosing at what level you want your BDM to be involved in your business uh, with the code understanding as well as with the understanding of products and different systems. Yeah, that's right. And, you, and you know, having that liaison, that, that uh, expert, right? Mm-hmm. Um, someone had that has that domain knowledge to actually help either younger employees within that business or even, even seasoned employees, mm-hmm. right? You, you brought up the smoke control before and a lot of companies, maybe they do it once or twice a year, right? Right. That's not a, that's not frequent enough to be an expert. I mean, I literally do it dozens of times a week. Right. <laughs> so right. so that's, that's way different than a few times a year when I'm doing it every day, mm-hmm. multiple times a day. Right. Now, now back. That's a good point. Uh, really quickly, I, want, I know I wanted to hit on this tier program again, really quick. Yeah. Now, this pa- the paperwork has gone out to customers who are current customers with Space Age, um, and they were uh, 
placed in a tier that seemed best for them. If if they want to do more business with Space Age and they want to like change which tier they are in, can they do that? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so the package you referred to was a, <laughs> was a mailing that went out just this month mm-hmm. um, to pretty much all of our silver, matter of fact, all the silver, gold, and platinum mm-hmm. dealers with a, a welcoming kit, um, explanation of the program, a um, little gift was included, and you know, customers are going to have a time to review that material kind of make a decision if, if, if their business position is correct. Now, now we've, we've done the analytics, like we have the software tools to kind of look at what the business has, has done in the past, mm-hmm. where they line up with our products and services today. You know, so the fits, the fits are, are good. Um, but if a customer, you know, comes back and says, oh, you know, I need to have your systems, right, our lifeguard systems, mm-hmm. um, absolutely. They have the opportunity to, to um, you know, evaluate with the BDM, the business development manager that's assigned to their, their area, and see how that product is going to fit into their organization, you know, what steps do they have to take to make sure they're successful with using that product from space age. So it's just a, it's just a process having a conversation. We call it a discovery meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, have that discovery meeting and and kind of review what the expectations are and and you know uh, haven't have the agreement. Right. That's 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 what it comes down to. Partners have agreements. We're going to do this. You're going to do that. Um, does it work for both parties? Um, and then we move forward. Right. So. That's a good point. As uh, you brought up the partnership, it's. Uh, you know, we're not taking anything away. It's just kind of more focusing on uh, what each company needs to needs to help grow their business, or what uh, education and expertise level they need from us. And so, I'm 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 a fan of the program. I think it's going to uh, help a lot more people understand that there's more tools available to them. Um, Mike, I had a I had, I know I had one question that I really wanted to ask you with your history in life safety and your knowledge of all the technical as well as the the code references and code committees you're on what do you what do you think is going to be different in a life safety system in the next 5 to 10 years what are, what's going to change in the system in the industry overall yeah, yeah. um well look we've seen a lot of changes already right i mean just just with the you know, pandemic, um, businesses had to rethink how they operate. Um, you know, on the technology front, we saw how the internet played such an integral role in businesses' ability to continue to function, remote workers, and so forth. I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. Um, the thing about our business, since we deal with the construction industry, mm-hmm. we still need workers, right, doing mm-hmm. the work, right? right, building the buildings, putting these systems in place, commissioning them, servicing them. That can't necessarily happen autonomously, mm-hmm. right? Although there are technologies coming, and, and we have some customers that are doing this, that they're able to service, program, um, inspect these systems from remote locations. Right. So I, I think that's going to be something that's um, more prominent in mm-hmm. the future. Um, as development continues to expand, so so America is in an unprecedented an unprecedented time of expansion. Right. While we face many challenges, the infrastructure bill. You wait to see how much business tries to go spend the one point nine trillion dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, just just signed into law uh, right. three weeks ago. So, um, and that's everywhere, right? I mean, they're going to be building bridges, piping systems, you name it. They're going to be building it. Right. They're going to need workers to do that. Right. They won't have the workforce. They won't have the expertise. So, companies like Space Age that could prefabricate, right? Kind of kind of be part of an extension of your business, our partner's business, and help them 
prepare for the installation with products that are the complicated products right. that are that are prefabricated. They could just kind of put them in with the the standard labor, not the expertise labor. You don't need someone with 25, 30 years of experience out there managing and, and operating the job. You need someone maybe that's five, 10 years experience. You say, yeah, put that there and connect that. Put it there, 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 and just move, move along the jobs much quicker, more efficient. That's a, that's a good point. I didn't think about making that connection of uh, the labor force being younger in the next few years and people who uh, have that expertise helping with prefabrication and kind of laying it out more for those. Wow. I think you're right on the, right on the money there. Uh, that's probably going to be a huge driving force uh, in the work force, work force and workflow for the next few years. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, and then also our, the program that we've designed here in the different tiers actually make those solutions available. All right. So a lot of customers that may not have seen that as an advantage are, are going to be exposed and say, Hey, yeah, like, like I need to do that. I need to start doing that. And maybe they start small and then they build over the next several years. Right. Right. Expanding when you need to be expanded. Um, I think, I think that was all the questions I had. So, Hey, Hey, listen, in, in, in closing, you know, I, I just, I just kind of wanted to, frame up what you had asked earlier, kind of what, what, what makes space age, space age, mm -hmm. you know, for me. So if you think about it for over half a century, you know, SAE space age has been educating life safety professionals and custom integrators on the methods of how to deliver code compliant installations and reduce the liability, right. Of those installations and improve the efficiencies through our custom design. So that's right. what we are. We're custom integrators. Mm -hmm. We make these custom products. So, you know, this long tradition that we have, right? Decades <clears throat> and all of our shared insights. So we've seen a lot of things that many customers haven't seen, right? So we continue to renew that focus and we help our partners going forward to deliver these professional code compliance solutions. Right. And, and in doing that, right, it adds a stronger, greater value to their service to services to the end user. OK. And, and in the end, their projects are just more profitable. So and, and we all know business is about profit. Okay? Right. And, and it's about delivering high quality goods and services at the best price, competitive price. Mm -hmm. right? and, and literally, that is the DNA of Space Age Electronics. And we've always kind of stayed true to our lane. We've stayed in what we do best and tried not to uh, you know, veer out of our sweet spot. Mike, so thank you for coming on. Um, I look forward to having more conversations with you on the podcast as well as in person when we meet again. Um, but I think I'm just going to wrap us up here. So thanks for coming, Mike. Casey, it was uh, my pleasure to be here and share some of my insights, uh, some of the new things happening at Space Age in 2022. Um, I hope our audience, you know, came away with some uh, nuggets of knowledge like you did, and and uh, we were helpful uh, to them in kind of learning more about Space Age and. Uh, what the future holds for the life safety industry. So, and I'd be happy to come back and talk a little deeper on other subjects. Um, we can always set that up at a later time. So thank you. Sounds good to me. Well, hey guys, thanks for watching this edition of the Space Age Electronics Podcast. Uh, remember, you can always go to onesae.com to see any of our products and solutions. And this podcast actually lives on YouTube. So any of the past episodes you want to look at, you can always go to YouTube. Uh, and if you're interested in maybe having us talk to you on the podcast, definitely reach out to any of us and we can set up a time to talk about any life safety subject you, you feel inclined to talk about. Um, as always, remember to reach out to us on LinkedIn. Any of our BDMs would be happy to talk to you. And thank you so much, guys, for watching this edition of the Space Age Electronics Podcast.